Yeah, hi everybody. I want to tell you today about Audito, our new web-based listening test system for auditory research with cochlear implant recipients that we have been working on for the past couple of years together with ARMS technology. We do cochlear implant research and are interested in many different aspects from the sound to perception pathway with these devices. And in particular, first, such as pre-processing strategies, for example, noise reduction strategies, and the perception or cognition, the last stage along this pathway, lend themselves really well to do remotely in the future. So why remote research with cochlear implants? We can improve our inclusion, have easier recruitment, better accessibility. We can maybe do longitudinal studies such as daily testing. We can have better collaboration across researchers, clinicians, across countries, across labs. And we can maybe think of clinical applications such as checkups and reducing time and cost and research studies, which are now also taking place remotely. Previous remote studies found differences in speech perception between highly controlled sound booth environments and less controlled remote environments. However, these disappeared when they used um, direct high quality audio connections. And now we have a new opportunity that Bluetooth streaming is being integrated into the newest generation of cochlear implant speech processors. And we have recently done last year a study where we compared our stripes test, which is a spectrotemporal resolution test, um, in a lab environment versus at home through a web-based remote test. And we found very consistent findings between the two, which is very promising for remote research testing. So we wanted to develop Audito, a new web-based system to perform our auditory experiments. We wanted to facilitate our testing in COVID times, increase our sample sizes in the future, improve our convenience, reduce costs, and have a flexible and easy to use system that we can also make available to other colleagues and collaborators in the future. We wanted to still maintain high experimental control by using the direct connection to the cochlear implant through Bluetooth streaming. And we wanted to have good compatibility with any device that has Bluetooth integrated, such as smartphones, tablets, laptops, PC, etc. So we build a system that can be used to implement a wide variety of listening tasks, including speech perception tasks for phoneme, word, sentence recognition, et cetera, and also sound perception tasks, for example, pitch perception or other detection thresholds. Because we want to use sound presentation via Bluetooth streaming, which is now, as I mentioned, being integrated out directly into the newest generation of processors, we have to take care of two main things. One is that Bluetooth streaming may fall into a sleep mode to save power. So we need to be careful whenever we restart the connection. And that's why we append short silences to all stimuli to avoid being um, them being cut off. And then we also implemented a new connection check feature where we can test automatically whether the Bluetooth streaming is active or not. So this is how the Auditor website looks like. We have a participant view where the participants log into the system. They see a welcome page and the tasks that they have been assigned to, to do. And then they can go through these listening tasks and complete them at home whenever they want to. And we have a researcher view, which has a behind the scenes information where the researcher can manage the projects, the stimuli sets, and also set up new listening tasks and manage the results, et cetera. So we have now completed or are currently completing the first Audito study where we have used or test three different tasks. One is a speech and noise task using sentences and bubble noise. The second one is again a speech and noise task using digits and stationary noise, a test that we developed together with my colleague here, Nandang, and is presented at Abstract 56 at the VCCA this year. And then also a spectrotemporal resolution test, the stripes test that I mentioned earlier. So for these three tests, we use three different um, response modes or input modes in Audito. The first one for the sentences, we use a vocal response measure where the participant simply repeats what they heard and that is recorded through the microphone of their device. The second task, the digit task, we use a typical numpad input form. And for the third task, the stripes, we use a multiple choice task where the participant clicks the bottom button, whether it's the first or the last sent, uh, sound that was different. 
For the first results, for the sentences and noise, we tested 10 CI listeners in the lab. Um, all users of advanced bionics devices that listened at 5 dB signal to noise ratio to either the noisy speech to a signal processed with a noise reduction, deep neural network algorithm, and thirdly, the clean speech without any noise. And we find that for the noisy speech, we have about 30%. After the noise reduction, this improves to about 60% correct. And then without any noise, we have basically perfect or 90% um, speech correct. This was now in the lab using a high quality audio direct connection. When we use in the lab testing the same 10 people, but using the Bluetooth streaming, we find super similar results here. And when we then tested 12 partly different listeners at home remotely with Bluetooth, we again find very similar results, not only overall, but also the differences between these conditions are highly similar. And this is very promising because we would have found or drawn the same conclusions, whether we would have tested this in the lab using an audio connection or remotely through Bluetooth streaming. For our DIN results, digits and noise test, we see quite a range of performance across our 12 listeners that we tested here remotely. But this range in scores is very similar to other studies, for example, by Jan Willem Bassmann, a recent study where they tested 50 cochlear implant listeners from the cochlear device and found a similar range of performances. So this is very much aligned with that. And then thirdly, for our spectrotemporal resolution task, Again, we see a large range of performances, but these are also highly in line with our previous studies that we conducted in the lab here. And we find very strong correlations for those listeners that took part in both in the lab and remote testing. And we also find quite large correlations here with the other tasks. So to discuss, I think this has been a, quite a success so far for developing our new DIN test and also for our first research study to use this new Audito web-based system. It's very important to have a very good initial introduction and support material available to the participants together with ongoing communication via email, etc. And we had some technical difficulties, especially concerning these vocal response recordings, which sometimes just don't work because of the device participant used or whatever. Then internet connection must be good and the Bluetooth connection must be set up by the participant correctly. We are now expanding our collaborations with other researchers and clinicians using this system. And we are currently working on further updates to Audito, for example, having anonymous logins and text re response options. So I would like to thank you. I'm open for any questions you may have and would like to thank my funding source, the MRC, and all my colleagues in the Cambridge Hearing Group and at the CBU. Thank you very much.